y'all. So happy Saturday. And we are back <clears throat> to work on our covers for our book. <clears throat> so this should be our finish. Um, and I'll be doing this in a couple of parts, but I'll be joining together because uh, there'll be need to be dry time in this. But I didn't want to like spread it out because I feel like we are at a good place with our book. Okay. So I'm going to work on the cover. So I don't really need this right now. I'm just going to work on the fabric pieces. And my idea is that I had these pieces of um, tea, tea bags that I had, you know, used and flattened out. And I always keep a, a stack of these. And I had this idea that I wanted to use them in this journal. Um, and I, I, I believe I'm going to use them on the covers here because I love the, I love the color. I love the, the scripting on here, but I don't want it so new looking, you know me. So I want to knock it back a little bit, but we'll still be able to see and appreciate it. Kind of want to give it that old world look. And I'm also going to <clears throat> take some of this and I'm not sure I'm going to put some of this on the front. Um, so we'll do some collaging to bring in the same elements that we had in the book. So let's get started because this is going to need to dry. Let me get my, oh gosh, I really got this PVA thing stuck on here. This is my, my large PVA. So let me get my, um, I didn't realize that it was so stuck on here. That's what I have my plumbers. If you ever have anything really stuck on, <laughs> just use your, get it going the right way. I just use my plumbers, these vice grips like this. I keep them in my studio for anything that's hard to open. You can get them. Sometimes you can find these at the dollar store, but you certainly can find these a lot of places for five dollars that kind of thing there but it takes it makes the impossible possible <clears throat> so I, I guess that was supposed to happen so any of those who <laughs> have um, tops stuck on in your studio and you've been wondering like what do I do or you spend a lot of time trying to loosen them up with water and they still don't go anywhere just keep a pair of those Okay, so let's work on one and then the other. So I'm going to start off by literally taking this glue and I'm really going to just get it down in this fabric. I'm going to get a good amount because I really want the tea bag to really stick. Um, to this fabric and I'm using a, a traditional PVA um, but you can find the same stuff on I, I know I have put links before but like Lenco on Amazon that's a good archival PVA um, this stuff is really it, it dries clear and it's like I said, archival. Don't worry about the acids or anything in the glue. Most glues I use are archival, though. Be honest. So, come down a little further. <clears throat> so, this will dry clear. It's going to give me the look to my covers that I want, which is collaged and, you know, we don't want anything just to be one layer. It's all about the layers. And it's about getting it on here straight, too. So let's get the top. So I'm just going to use my hands to really just... <clears throat> And I really want to 
So I'm going to use this credit card and I'm really just going to press this down into the grooves of the um, corduroy because I don't want to lose too much of the dimension and texture plus I really want to make sure that this is going to grab around it and when it dries it's going to dry clear we already can see how it's just see how it's already kind of obscuring the print but we can still see it Okay, so now that I've done that, I'm now I'm going to also just kind of press it back out some. Kind of smush it a little bit. So I definitely don't want to lose that texture. But I don't want it to look like, you know, like we're just too regimented either. So we're going to just, while everything is still wet, I'm just going to kind of scrunch it and sort of get the wrinkles in the paper. Because we don't want this to look like you know so perfectly new either we gotta have like a little age factor to it see so just kinda of, I don't know if you can kinda of see but just I'm kind of putting that texture back in it so it'll dry oh this is gonna dry really beautifully so I think I may should I skip the middle do I have any more of these tea bags I do I think I'm gonna just go straight and butt it up and then um, get some more tea bag. Uh, where's my stash? Is it, is it in? I don't know if it's in this studio or out in my other studio. I'm over here looking in this drawer. So if not, I'll finish this. If I finish it off camera, at least you know what I'm doing. But I want to get these down. So let's go ahead and now do this one. Because these are going to need to dry anyway. I'm loving the tea bag on there. Oops. Well, today must be Thursday. Yes, Thursday morning. It's time for my. See, I always, I always say Happy Saturday, but yeah. we do these. I do these normally. I do my videos for you guys on Thursday or Friday, and I've already done a video this morning for my patrons working on another altered book and that's my alarm going off to remind me that my Tai Chi teach my Tai Chi class is coming up I might miss a, a bit of it because I want to get this done because so, this has to dry Okay. Alrighty. Let's just go ahead and put this in. I'm going to do the same thing. It'd be nice to get it straight though. Straight from side to side. Okay. So let's do the same thing. Let's kind of I'm just gently pressing the grooves in there. I'm not really, you know, trying to score it. I just don't want it laying on the surface with those pieces, with these, with it, without tucking it down in there. Some because it also makes the cover more vulnerable. That's a place where it could tear more easily because it's just stretched across a gully, you know, versus being down in there. Okay. So let's do our, our kind of scrunching and wrinkling bit here. Oh, that looks, that's looking, that's looking good. Oh, I love it. That's going to be so nice on the cover of our book. That's going to be just brilliant. Yes. Oh, I'm also going to have a piece of cardboard. I'm going to back this on. I think I'm gonna back it on a piece of cardboard so that I just make the cover stronger. So this is done. Let's put this to the side and we're gonna just let this dry completely. And like I said, I will still be doing some collaging, which I'll we'll do that together. But can you imagine just a little bit of this down? And oh, okay, Robin, don't get ahead of yourself. 
Okay, so let's put this to the side and let that dry. And let's grab this other one, do the same thing. So you want to do a similar thing? Have at it. It's fun working with tea bags if you haven't before or if you have a different idea for your cover. Alrighty, so we'll continue. The covers have dried a bit. I am going to do a little bit more with you on the covers because I want to finish this part because I had to find the rest of my papers. And I let I had some downtime to let the covers dry. So we're going to do some more collaging on them. So I'm, I'm piecing this to, video together for you guys so that it time lapse and we don't have all this downtime or you don't have to wait till next week for me to do things that just required drying time and I kind of sort of figured out how I want the book to go together so um, yeah these are all the various components I decided to, to get some boards off of an old book because I wanted there to be sort of like these old I wanted boards I wanted to put this on a board on a book board and then glue that book board to my first section and I purposely kind of tore it off this is from an old book a census book or something but I purposely tore it so that I get this ragged edge it's an old cover so I want that look this is going to get glued to it so you're not going to see a lot of it but you will see sort of the tattered edges and corners and stuff so I kind of wanted that feel to it but I wanted it to sort of be on this hard board so it'll be something like that with this sandwiched in between the layers of probably the back cover and this is the front okay so we're just going to keep on going I just wanted to show you I kind of during my drying time I pulled together a lot of the the various pieces that I wanted to be able to finish the book and kind of finish you know get my concept it just kept on growing so you know so get a little more glue here a little more glue see it's dried up nicely really has we can still see our gessoed um, bits underneath there but really just adds to the it makes the fabric even stronger and then when we put it on the board it's just going to even be better so let me just go ahead and grab some let's get this glue on here so yep get this on here it dries pretty quickly though but you know a few hours downtime so this will be good you guys can do this over the next few days because you know you really want to let things dry good and if you want to do book covers like mine you know I kind of went out into my um my other studio and just got um, I went through some of my old books, which I've got a lot of them. I just have so many of them. I've got to use them in my book projects. But you can always go to the Goodwill. That's always a really good place to find books. And just take your, take your piece of fabric with you, you know, and just go through each of the books <laughs> until you find one that's going to fit you know your you know the size of your book that you've already created so that's good and then let's get this one here yeah I'm liking the way this is really turning out it's like we've, we're doing another altered book <laughs> we are really doing another altered book we're using our some old book covers and uh, there's all kinds of ways to do altered books. That's the fun of it all. So this is kind of cool to do one after our last one. And it's a, a, you know, a completely different way of looking at a book and altering it. Just want to make sure I get enough in there. 
Okay, so I grab this piece. Just getting some more of the tea off of it. Alrighty, I'm checking on my frame and making sure everything is okay there. I'm not off frame. Okay. There. I'm liking the fact that this corduroy gives me this extra bonus of being able to really play with these channels. Okay. Perfect. Great. Okay, so this still goes to the side right now because I'm still working on um want to work on doing some more collaging. That's what we're going to do right now. So, I kind of want to figure out how I want to do this. I know I want to use this. Since I have this on the inside of the book and then I have my scripting out here. And this is also very thin paper, so it's going to, when I go to glue it down, it'll definitely disappear as well. So let's just kind of plan it out a little bit. So I'm going to do that. going to be the back cover. So I'm just going to kind of do a little quick layout. Just sort of figure out what I want to do here. Okay, I like that. And I'll bring another strip down on this back side. Just a little bit. I'm not going to cover the whole thing, but I want to integrate this text. Hmm. Let's figure it out. <laughs> Maybe. Let me see. Do it like that. Maybe something like that. Okay. Then I have this. This is going to be my front cover. So, okay. Something like that. Hmm. Hum, hum, hum. This is always. Oh, I know what I have that could be cool too. Some of this stained paper. This is some onion skin paper that I've stained. Maybe a little bit of this mixed in. Let's just see. We'll just kind of tear it and play with it. That's all we can do. Oh, I like that. Okay, we're getting somewhere. We are getting somewhere, and this right here with my oh, I like this. 
me see. Where do I want to put this, though? That's what I need it. So this is going to be the front cover. I wanted to have that old, you know, collectible look. like I want to put something else down when I put this down. Now this is all going to suck down really nicely. This is all going to really sort of disappear because it's going to be pretty thin. Oh yeah, I like that. Okay. So I think that's going to be good for my cover. And this is going to be my back. So let's work on this one first. I'm going to use, I'm going to keep on using a PVA since first of all, I have a good amount of it here that I've just poured out. And secondly, I know that this is going to do what I want it to do with this, um, on top of the um, tea bags. And why change glues? I mean, I'm using this glue. It's all going to be drying and being here at the same rate. So I'm not going to change it. Love it. Oh, love it. Oh boy, can you tell that I love it? Okay, we're gonna put this here. Okay. I need to get some more glue. That paper is going down so beautiful. So that's onion skin that I coffee and tea stain, did some rusting with some um some patterned plastic stuff that I had gotten when I was in uh, Mexico. I've been really having a lot of fun staining with it. The patterns, it kind of makes this sort of feather pattern, which I love. Okay. Okay, we're looking good. So I want that to go right there. Just kind of, I want this to set in to, you know, my creases before I pull it straight. That's why I'm holding it up and kind of letting it just kind of smush in to this cover. So I really want it to dry as an integral part. Oh, love it. Yes, so see coming along here. Just take my time and just get it down in there good. And then this piece is gonna just kind of do across like that. <clears throat> Let's get that down. cover the characters a little bit. Okay. Just put that back there. Okay. All right. So that's my back cover. It's looking good. I don't think that I'm going to want, I mean, I don't know that I want to overdo. This is going to be the back. 
I just love them. It's just so rich. And I was going to cut this off. That's like the extra tea paper, but I might leave that. Because I like all the extra stuff spilling over and all of that. And this tea paper is really strong. So, I mean, I'm going to get rid of this here. But the tea paper is really strong. So, it will hold up to hanging out. Plus, this book is not going to get a whole lot of wear and tear. Right? Okay. Go ahead and just pull this off. Okay. Oh, I like that. Okay. So... Go ahead and do this front piece, and I can decide if I want to do anything else there. Love it. Okay, so let's get this stuff going. Let's start at the bottom. Let's get this piece on there. So it's going to go right about there. Get some fresh. Okay. And then we'll let this dry again. And then by that time, the, the, what's left is the easy part. We just have to glue the covers on. <laughs> glue the covers and let it um, let me make sure. Yep. We're going to glue the covers and let it set up. That's it. We're done. I have still some stuff. Um, I still have stuff to do inside of the book that I haven't done. I wanted to add some more of the jelly prints that I did and a few things like that. But that can even happen in the book after. You know, you can do like little finishing touches. even after the covers are on. Okay. Okay. Let's tear a bit of this off. Ah. It's kind of it's strong paper, so it doesn't really want to tear like that. Okay. So this is going to go there like that. Let me see if I want to put a little something there. I know I stopped it short and I was kind of like wanting to do that, but now I think I want to. Let's just do a little extra collaging because this is going to come down. This is our front. I like the way that looks. Let me put that there. I really like the way that looks. And it's the onion skin so you can actually see the watermark. And it says the company. So I kind of like that that look and I'm just taking and putting the flush edge here so same thing I haven't put it down super tight yet and by, by it being this PVA it's going to move a bit before it actually settles in and then I can really get those you know my ridges because I really want this to adhere to the ridges I don't want the paper to be flush on top of it it's so stretched that over time with use it starts cracking because the ridges are there and it's tight you know what I mean it's like kind of stretched over I want them to go down in there so that's going to be there this piece is going to come down like that Yep, so this piece right here has to go on. Okay. Oops, come on. Cooperate. All right. Ok, 
Okay. Let's put this right here. Oh, that's so beautiful. And the way it just kind of fades into the piece underneath because this paper is all so thin and beautiful. You can just sort of see how it, uh, you can tell. Just how it's all sort of like, you know, blending these like really fine layers going on, which I love. Okay, so now this piece is going to go Got to keep on putting this piece down because I want to see exactly where that one was going. So this is going to go, and I want to leave some spaces. That's going to go there, so that means this is going to go right about there. Okay. Kind of got a little lift here. I know this is the the brighter side, but that's too bright. I really want it to be. So I'm going to use the back side of this um, stain piece. Same thing. I'm just going to kind of take my time and just, I'm just kind of taking my fingers and kind of putting it into each of these ridges while the paper is still wet and flexible and the glue hasn't set up yet. Oh, love it. stuff so our last piece is going to go there like that yep this is coming along so this will dry up I don't think I'm gonna put anything else on the covers <laughs> but I could keep on collaging because it is the last bit so you know, the nice thing about it, once it dries, if there's something else I decide I want to put on it, I can still put it on there. But I'm going to focus on getting, you know, finish getting the book constructed. And our cover's on. But that doesn't stop us from ever adding more if we want it to. Okay, so here again, just kind of lay it down straight where I want it. And then, you know, just using my fingers, as I can feel those grooves really well, I'm just kind of pushing them down in there. And I'll just put a little right here. Oops. Wow. So I'll put that up close so you guys can see it. All that coffee staining and the old documents. And I prop whoops. Oh my god. I messed up my little thing there. Get this dry. And what I'm probably gonna do with this book is I'm gonna spray a matte medium on it when it's done. Like once it's dry, I have some matte medium and I'm just going to take and spray it on there because it'll just set everything. I mean, you know, it is a cover on the book. These papers are, will be nice and tough on here, but I think just a, a matte medium will just seal everything. Um, and, you know, since it is a cover, 
Let me see. Let's just get a little bit of glue up underneath there. And also, since it's, um, I have some echo stain stuff on here, coffee or tea, I just want to um, seal it off from any exposure to humidity that may change it or um, critters that could be attracted to it. So I'll do that on stuff like this where I want it to, you know, um, you know, where it's really thick and dense and it could be um, an attraction. And then that way you know that your covers are sealed off nicely and you don't have to worry about anything. So these are both done. I really like them. Oh my goodness. And I feel like they're going to work so well with the book, right? I mean, it really, really do go well with what we have going on in the book. I mean, look at that. It's just perfect. Uh, love it. So, okay, we're going to stop. I'll stop the video for a minute. Let all this dry up and I'll be back when everything is dry. And, um, and then all we're going to do then basically is attach this to the covers and then I'm going to attach the covers to the boards, I mean, to the book. And then after that, it goes under weight and we let it just finish. And this is going to get put on there. I think I might put this even from the back. So I think I'm going to put this under the back pages so it can come up and wrap around the book that's what I'm thinking um yeah alrighty so I'll be back in a little bit bye bye <laughs> all right so things are drying up it's still a little damp but it's good enough to go ahead to this next part I mean it's not damp but you just feel a little moisture in it so while I was away I did add a couple of things you probably have noticed so to this, I added another little circle piece. I came across that and I liked it. And I thought, let me just put that down there. I just feel like it balances off things nicely. And then under here, I put one of my, one of my um, scripts. And then I layered it under a piece of um, tea bag. So I took the script from one of this, from this page. It was actually down there. And I liked that little one. So I did put that down on the cover. So I do feel like they're complete now. So let's start off. I always do the back boards, back covers of my book first. It's just habit because um, if I'm going to make any mistakes, I'd rather make it on the back. So it's habit. <laughs> now what's interesting is it looks like, oh, Oh, wow this is cool remember how I had this this cut out right there and I was going to add something to it well look how neat this is this cover that has this sort of old census map but it has that going around it it looks like when I go to put this on here let me see at the very least I may have a little bit of a border or something which would be cool let's see no I won't see the border because it, it needs to be out further, but that's good. It's it still has the black and cream. I like the inside of that board, so we'll see. We shall see. Okay, so right now let's do the back though. So this is going to be the way this goes. Yep. Let me go ahead and get some glue. Now this time I'll put the glue right on the board. I want to get a good amount on there and it's easier just to put it right on the board. And then with my glue brush, let's go ahead and move it about. This is the PVA. So if I need to put some extra down, I will. I'm just going to put it over there. Generally, 
this is going to be enough. It's not going to be too much. It can start off looking like it's going to be too much, but generally, I have to add some. But this one looks like I'm okay. Those of you who saw me do the covers for the altered books, you know that once I put my glue down using my glue brush, I like to stipple because that's what makes the high and lows and it causes your glue to stick much better to whatever it is you want it to stick to. So you just get these old mountains and valleys all over the place. And that way you don't, you don't run the risk of having too much like uh, puddles or, or ridges. And then all that stuff is doing is just squishing around the place on you. So like that, we'll do it. And this is the back. So it's gonna go at the bottom. Let me turn it around this way so I can see what I'm doing good. down really nicely so flip it over really just kind of so that's on there really nice and solid love it okay so we can go for the front now. This is going to be the front. Now, yeah, because that's the back. So I wanted both of the sort of ragged edges to go together. So that should be the case. Let me just double check with this. That's the back. Maybe not. So this is the back. Yeah, so that goes there. And then this will be the front. Yep, so that'll be good. Oh, now let me pull this out because I don't want to forget to put this on the board <laughs> when I get ready to glue. Wait a minute, I just did. Hold up. Hold up. I was supposed to put this in the back. Well, I should be able to save the day. Let's see. Yep. Thank goodness, because it's fabric. Wow. Cool. The fact that it's fabric <gasps> saved me. Because I do want it in between here and here. I don't want it. I was thinking I was going to put it there and there, but I don't. I want it in between this because that's going to be the sturdier bit of it. So let me just find the middle. I don't want this um to be ironed because I, I like it to be wrinkled see so i'm gonna put it in about halfway sort of the higher part of half and then that way it's going to come around and wrap around that way okay perfect so more glue wow i'm glad i thought about that before it all set up <laughs> If that had been paper, not so much. It wouldn't have come off. The fact that we're dealing with fabric and this upholstery rate weight fabric and stuff. That's the only reason why we were able to pull this up at all. So I am going to start putting some of this over on this cover because I kind of got a lot extra here. And the, it's not as absorbent as it was the first time around because, of course, now the cover already has glue on it. Okay, let's just get that flat. Nice thing about this sari ribbon is that it will go nice and flat. Ok, 
Okay, I'm going to use my fingers even. Alrighty. That was a good save. My hands are pretty messy. Okay, that's what I wanted because I want I want it to come from around the back. That way, even when you're um, oops, how did I get this on there? That way, even when you're just getting my tweezers, looking at the book. The strips are kind of hanging from the back, not from the front. It's like a piece of tissue just stuck there. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Golly, it's stuck down quick. There we go. Whew. All righty, let's put this to the side. Okay, that looks good. All righty. Now, back over here. Go ahead and get this. Oh, look at me. I put this on the wrong side. I'm doing everything that you shouldn't do today. This won't matter. I'm just going to spread it out because we are gluing this book down. And interestingly enough, with PVA, if you want a really good bond, you put a layer down and let it dry. And then you come back. And put another layer down so it turns out that's what this is going to be not that we had to because it's paper um to um it's paper to the board but it doesn't hurt so let me grab something that i can take and flip this over on and i don't have to worry about that getting everywhere Oh, okay, well, Robin's on a roll. <laughs> What's good for you all to see all these little things because you learn what not to do or if something should happen, it's nice to know ways to fix it, right? So, I've, I've done just about everything that you can do when it comes to binding a book. Trust me. So very little panics me. I normally <laughs> have a fix for just about just about anything. I mean, there are some things that, you know, can cause me just to say, oh, I'll be starting all over again. Or I'll start that piece over again. But generally, there's always sort of a way to deal with it. You just have to either have had it happen to you before or, or when it happens to you for the first time think through it before you give up okay this is wax paper so our underside should not be sticking but I'm just going to check okay okay So we'll put this down. Get these. Still moves enough. So Alrighty. Okay. So, this is our front. This is our front. We just sort of see where, how I'm going to position this. So 
this is going to go all the way to the end of this book. Sort of like this. Yep. That's going to be good. Okay. Alrighty. Let's go ahead and get some more glue. Um, let's get the PVA. Let's get some more of that. I could have gone on, the reason why, let me just tell you, the reason why I didn't go ahead and glue the back cover, or this is the front cover, when all that glue was on there is because I really wanted to get that back cover positioned first before I put this on there because, because we have like, you know, bits and pieces hanging over and, um, what have you it's not exactly everything is it's kind of this is sort of like you know I've, I've got all these pieces cousin together it's not like any of this was cut for it like actually this corduroy I had cut weeks earlier then when we did the paper I just took a certain size and folded it down it wasn't like I was really focusing on oh it needed to be this side or, or measured it and then when I went out into my other studio looking for book boards I just kind of took the fabric piece out with me and said okay <laughs> let's find something here so they're, these are all cousin together meaning they're not going to be you know we're not going to have exact measurements okay so this is the front that's the front double check this is the front so I figured that what I needed to do was Basically, let me get this corner right. Check the top. Yep. Okay. So there so we'll just go ahead and smooth that and then we're going to put a uh, piece of wax paper down oh boy this is nice go ahead and just Okay. Okay, so that's that. Love it. I love this stuff hanging over. And there's a little bit remnants of that map that was on that cover. See just that little bit there? I love that. Just a little bit of history that uh wouldn't otherwise know about okay so now this one is going to go down yep we are we're done aren't we hmm I'm yeah aside from me there's a few little extra little things I'm going to do when I go to finish off the book if I can get this um stuff off my hands <laughs> my hands are so glued up now let me turn it this way it's amazing but um I always come back and do some of the finishing touches inside of the book so I have a few things I'm going to do but aside from that I believe we're done with this structure cool So then after this, this is going to go under weight. Just trying to keep these cords out the way so I don't get glue on them. Um, this will go under weight like we did with the altered book, the other 
the other altar pole. <laughs> Technically, this is our second one. Um, so, and I'll leave it like that for about 24 hours. Right, you know, that way it really settles in. I might be kind of right here at the edge of the desk, but that's because I want these cords to hang down so that I don't get glue on them. And as long as it's kind of like on that flat surface, they were kind of keep on wanting to catch. Okay. I stipple it. This is a glue brush. I know I put before when we were doing the other book, I put... Uh, the glue, you know, some links for the glue brush. Um, and I'm pretty sure they're still under there. But this brush is specific for this, so it, it does a good job of putting your glue down and keeping it out of the way. Okay, so let's, oh, I'm not, I need to do it the other way. Let's do it the way I can see it. So let's take and bring it this forward. Um, I want to do one thing. I decided that I'm just going to trim this little extra bit off because it's kind of overhangs the, uh, the other pages and it's not like I need it. So let's see. Okay, that's much better. So let's go ahead and this down something there okay. okay I think we're good and make sure my boards are Square. I'm sorry, I have them. I'm, they were closer to me, but it was kind of a critical time here. <laughs> I have a piece missing there. So let's just go ahead and let's put a little something here. I think I'll put my... Um, my bit of scripting down there. But let's first finish this off. Now I'm going to show you why it was important for me to make sure that I went on and lifted and put this thread, I mean this, I keep on calling it thread, but that ribbon in between the fabric cover and the board because if I had put it on here, I'd have a hump there right now. You would actually, this ribbon would be laying there and you would have a ridge. And I don't want a ridge. You know, I don't have a ridge in the front. I don't want a ridge in the back. But in underneath this, it you can't even tell that it's there. So that's why I really wanted to make sure that I uh, went on and grabbed that off of there. Because that would have been, that would not have made me happy. Okay, after all this work, and then I get it wrong. No good. So, I got my little piece of scripting that I'll put there. Like a signature. <laughs> and it covered up that bit of the board. Because we knew I had, I knew I had that little jog out, and I knew some kind of way I was going to fix it. So, now it's time for me to get this thing under weight because I don't want it to um, start rippling because there's a lot of moisture there 
I'm using my bone folder just to really make sure. Okay, let me look at this one. there okay it's looking good so this is going to be ready to go under weight but I'll just show you real quickly before I put it under weight that the covers are going to come, the strings come around on both sides like this and wrap. And that's, you know, um, they can actually go around one more time, but just to kind of sort of show you my thinking for the, the bundle. And then, um, I'm not wrapping it as tight as I would because I want to put the get it back under weight. But I'll show you once it's done. So we're going to, I feel good about this being down there. So let's go ahead and put a, a, the wax paper. The wax paper is best because it creates a, a vapor barrier. And that's what we want. We want, we really want the, um, the moisture to kind of evaporate out of the board, like, you know, out the top. I'll show you. I just want to, I see where I could stand to, the glue takes a while to set up. So, you know, it gives you enough time to go back with your bone folder and really get in there and burnish. Okay, so here's our other one and so the reason why I'm putting the wax paper it doesn't matter I could put the wax paper this way or this way it really doesn't matter what I don't want you want the wax paper because you definitely want the moisture to go out of the book up this way I don't want it to double back down on the pages and then start start warping the pages. So that's why you want to make sure you use a wax paper so that you can get a good um, so that it, you know during the drying time. And I'm just going to kind of put these off to the side like that. So when I put it under weight, my tapes, my you know sorry silk will be off to the side. I really, I really love it on these black covers. I'm so glad that I kind of add that to the process. So now we have this really beautiful concertina book that we can't really play with right now. So let me put this under, let me do the right thing. Let's go put our boards under weight and we'll come back and ooh and ah when they're dry. Alrighty. Hey, so I'm back for the finish of our journal that's underneath here somewhere. I've just hands were um got a lot of paint on them because it's another day i let the book rest overnight and i've been just jelly printing all morning here in the studio trying new stencils trying new paints i got a bunch of new colors from arteza really pretty palette um so i was playing with some of those even though these are not my color palette generally i mean look how pretty these are I will definitely be using these in um, some collage elements some things I'm working on um, and then this is my scripting over top of it in the gold so having a good time here it is in this sort of emerald color and um, this of course is with quinacridone ozo gold but this is the a green this green I want to say is the pearl chartreuse in the Arteza and it's you can see how it's raised but let me see this looks so good and all I have to do is stain this 
and this piece will just be fabulous oh here i'm working with with the gold um ink eyes inks from seth after and check this out can you see how the the gold is just laying on there it is just gorgeous the te i was just playing with different techniques on the jelly plate but this particular technique is very easy to do but with really great results and I first did it on a circle over here somewhere. I don't know what I'd do with that circle. It really came out nicely. I don't know where it is. I don't want to spend a lot of time on this end. Okay. So anyhow, just working with this is a stencil, a ladder stencil from Jelly Arts. I like some just kind of playing around with some techniques. Here's some more old wall with my stencils. So I'm just showing you some stuff because I've just it was here, which is why my desk is kind of configured a little differently, but just working on various different. I really like the way this came out as well. Now these I'm going to stain, get rid of those the white areas, but just the colors. Now these are using the Arteza colors too, but I got them a little bit more muddied and I did use my Celadon. But you can see some really pretty colors. So anyhow, just playing around, working on the best way for me to come up with new techniques and stuff like that like i'm always challenging myself i want to do i want another new technique i want to da, 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 da. and then i get like frustrated when i um like what maybe something i have in mind doesn't like exactly work you know or something and i say to myself well you know you just have to play here's the here's the circle look at that one so i used a circle stencil but let's see if i can get it close that white is actually the wicking of ink look at that that's ink and then the pink and then the gold, this is Seth Apter. Oh, I just like, I was like over the moon with like just seeing how these techniques are and like all the possibilities for using those techniques. So just playing. But anyway, here's one with my, with my scripting. Like this one I started working on as a uh, collage. Just kind of playing with the idea. But of course, you know, I like this background. And then this is one of my... But around the side, you can see where, come on, the, where the gold is. You see that? It's just laying there like bubbles almost, raised on the surface. This stuff is so cool. So anyway, just kind of working some ideas for, and I'll be working some old book pages in with this or something. But anyhow, just showing you what's on my desk. Okay, the book finished. Drum roll. Oh, I love it. Also, below the video is also the winners for the gifting on IG and here on YouTube. You guys, of those have already been notified, but um, the names will be below the video. So, congrats! And um, there's also going to be there's also a link over to my Teachable platform, which is where I could put the video up because it kind of technically. I don't want to you know, have problems with YouTube. So <laughs> anyway, but it was like a four minute video, but it's me and Eva pulling, she's pulling names out of the hat and we're just doing bell rings. I don't have a drum, so I have a bell, I'm dinging a bell and we're having fun. So if you just want to laugh for a few minutes, um, hit the, hit the link for the video below and it'll take you, it's, it's posted, it's hosted on my teachable. So the finish here, I love the way this came out, the boards, Nice hard boards, everything just really um, glued and finished beautifully. Um, it's a really nice solid foundation. Um, all of the um, collaging and stuff is just wonderful. So it's just tied around and basically what I did is I just wrapped it around as many times as it would go. And now we have it on either side and you saw where I had added that little element before I went to dry it, one of my scripts. And then basically you just, you know, just lays out like that and we get to flip it like a traditional book would. Love it. So make sure I'm on camera so you guys can enjoy it too. And then it does like that. 
and we open it here. Oops, I forgot I gotta take this one out the way. And we go the other way. Love it. And then we're back to the front. So it's just that simple, really like the way this came out. The way I'm wrapping it is I'm just taking one and wrap it around. And then the second one. Now I have a tendency to tie, as you can see, I put the strings. I always put things slightly higher than middle, than the middle. Because if you put it right in the middle, it always seems like it's too low. But if you just put it slightly higher than the middle, then it all then whatever you're doing that's the focal like or like ribbon or anything like this, I'm telling you, it always looks better. Just to put it just a little tad above um, the middle. And the same is true even when you're hanging pictures. You know, like wherever your sight line is, just always put it just a little bit on the higher side of of the even point. So anyhow, that's it. Our book is done. That was only a couple of weeks, right? That was fun. So we got basically another altered book in, in the concertina style. Next week is going to be a, a jelly printing video that's going to um, kick off my 10k celebration. So there will be all kinds of things that I'll be releasing. Um, probably over on my blog is where I'm going to put all of the gifts that are going to be um, gifted. Um, once I reach 10K and uh, so anyway, we're gonna have some jelly printing sessions. Um, there's gonna be a Seth after session where I'm going to um, work with his baked textures and do some encaustics. So we're gonna, I mean, yeah, encaustics. So we'll have fun with that. So a lot of things planned. Alrighty, take care and uh, thanks for hanging out with me. Bye-bye.